All right, let's solve the uh, challenge that uh, I gave to you right at the end of the last video. So to start off with, what we need to do is constrain the left edge of new number. So I'm going to click on that, now edit text, new number. So constrain the left edge of that to the left edge of the layout. Like so. And it's right edge to the right edge of the layout. So its sizes in both planes should be set to rep underscore content already. And it is in this case, but if it's not in your version, make sure you change them. And also I want to set, make sure the three margins are all set to eight, which they are set here, as we can see in the inspector. And finally set the horizontal slider to be set to 50 if it's not already. But again, in my case, it is set. Now the operation text view should also be set to wrap underscore contents. I'm going to click on the text view. And you can see that's set for wrap underscore content. And the slider should be set to 50, which it is. And the left and right margins are set to the same value. Now I'm using 8 here, but uh, 16 would be okay as well. Now because it's only displaying a single character, which might look a bit lost, I'm going to use the properties on the right hand side to set the text size to a larger size, to 18 SP and also set the bold button just below that. So come down here, you can click on bold and also change this as I mentioned to 18 SP. Just enter there. Now we can't see much change at the moment but as both of the edit text widgets also use a text size of 18 SP, this text view will look better at that size. Now that's looking pretty good but before I forget, we also want to allow single decimal numbers, things like negative 4.567. Now the edit text widget we've used allows sign numbers, but not decimals. So we need to, or we have a change to make. So when I select the result widget, over in the inputs to the right here is input type, and you can see it's set to number signed. Now we also want that to be number decimal. So I'm gonna click on this ellipsis button over here. You can see that we get a menu when that pops up, and we can keep, we can then tick the options we want. So after coming down here and selecting number decimal by checking the box and clicking on OK, we can see now that both those options are in there. There's like number sign that was there and then there's a pipe character then the number decimal. We want to do the same now for the new number. So click on that. Come over here to the ellipsis and add number decimal or check number decimal as well. So that's now set to both values. Now if you don't do that, you won't be able to use button dot to enter, to enter a decimal point into your numbers. Now there's one last change I want to make to the result edit text widget. So I'm going to select that. Now when we run the button click app, the soft keyboard appeared automatically on the screen and let us type into the edit text widget. Now we don't want users to be able to type into the result widget. That's just there to display the result of the calculation. Now the way to prevent that behavior is to use the focusable attributes. So when I actually expand the, at the list of attributes and scroll down, you can see here we've got uh, focusable as well as focus in touch mode. Now the reason for two properties is that mobile devices can uh, have different input methods. For example, you could have a phone that only works in touch mode and a tablet that has a physical keyboard connected, in which case it's not in touch mode. Actually, most modern Android phones support USB on the go or USB OTG so that you can connect an external keyboard and or mouse to them. Now, if you do that, they'll, not, they'll actually no longer be in touch mode either. And when a device is in touch mode, widgets are not focusable. But uh, there is an exception for widgets that are designed for text input, like the edit text that uh, we're using. So we need to set both of these attributes to false to prevent the soft keyboard from appearing when the user taps the widget or clicks on it with an external mouse. So I come over here now to focusable and select the drop down. You can see that uh, the focusable attribute only shows true and auto. So we need to actually type in false for this one. So I'm going to type in false and press enter. Uh, but on the other hand, focusable in touch mode, if I click into there, I'm just going to expand this out a little bit more so we can see it a little bit better. Now, focus on the touch mode, you can see that I'm actually clicking here. It uses a tri-state checkbox and uh, it can be set to one of three states. A dash means it's set to the default, which it is now. A tick means it's set to true and if it's empty, that's false. But unfortunately, as you can see here, it doesn't work. It's actually a bug. 
Now, it's a bug that's been present for quite a while actually since Android Studio 2.3. And by the way, I've mentioned a few bugs so far, but don't let that put you off Android Studio. Remember that this layout design is just a convenience so that you don't have to type in loads of XML. In the first version of this course a few years ago, that's how we created the layouts, by typing in the XML. So things have certainly come a long way and uh, obviously over time will get even better. But uh, in our case now, what can we do about this bug? Well, the work about the workaround is to use the tools property instead. Now, you may have noticed that some of these attributes seem to appear twice, with one version having a spanner, or wrench in American, next to them. One example is the text attribute, which we can see when I collapse the attributes. So we've got text, and we've got this one with the spanner or the wrench with the, uh, of the same name. So these are tool attributes and only apply inside the layout designer. So that means that changing these, the ones with the wrench or the spanner, they've got no effect when you run the app. So just to show you what I mean in the text, we can type in say negative 8765.43 and you can see that immediately shows up in the, in the actual field itself in the result edit text. But if I actually delete that again, and come down here to the text one with the spanner or wrench and press enter. That still shows, but the difference here is that uh, the number in the second one, in the second field with one with the wrench or the spanner, that won't appear when we run the app. So it's basically there to help you with the visual display. All right, so if we go back to the focusable in touch mode attribute in the extended list, we can come over here and we can actually click on this little spanner to the right hand side. And you can see when I've done that, that's opened up another one just below. Now this one doesn't suffer from the same bug. And we can come down here, we can click on this. And you can see that works. We've got a checkbox now. And then we want to turn it off to make it false. So this one doesn't suffer, as you can see, from the same bug. And we're able to tick it. And uh, obviously because it's the wrench or the spanner version, it's not going to have any effect when we run the app. But what we can do is come over here and click on the text tab. You can see we've got tools colon focusable in touch mode equals false. Well, I can change that to Android. So in other words, come up here and change it to Android. And we're going to come over here and set that to true as well. Could have left it as it was. And I'm going to take the other opportunity now to just delete the, uh, the text as well because we don't need that anymore. All right, so now that we've done that though, we come back to design. You can see we've now got a checkbox in the focusable in touch mode in the first one, not in the tools one. And I can actually tick that again now and uh, turn the effect off and actually make it false. So that's a quick way to work around this particular bug. And by the way, if I click it a third time, we get the dash back again, and you won't be able to change it back again without using the tools attribute again. So we'll click on that now, you can see that it's not working. But then I can do the same thing here. I can come back under the tools version of it back into design, into text rather, and change tools to Android. And we'll leave it on false because that's ultimately what we want it to set to be. And that's now working. And then I can come over here and I can close down the tools version. All right, so at this point now we've disabled both focusable and focusable in touch mode for the result edit text. Now we could do the same with the new number edit text widget whether to allow the soft keyboard to be used with it is the sort of design decision you have to make when creating your user interface. In other words, does it make sense to restrict the entry of numbers to our buttons only? Possibly would be the answer, but if someone is using an external keyboard, they'd probably be a bit upset if they went to, uh, if they have to touch the screen to use our calculator. So focusable should almost certainly be set for this widget. This is the new number widget. And I've also decided to allow numbers to be entered using the soft keyboard. That way users can uh, use its backspace key to, prove, to correct typing errors if they want to. So I'm also going to leave focusable and focusable in touch mode unchanged for this widget. And uh, if you don't want to allow the on-screen keyboard to be used, you now know how to disable it. All right, now we just need to line up the buttons. So to do that, what we need to do is delete the left constraint for button seven, then set it to the left edge of new number instead. So I'm going to come over here, we've got this constraint for number seven, our digit seven, and I'll just go back to our normal mode there. We can see that we've got the left constraint, which is to the left screen, left of uh, the layout. So I'm going to delete that. And then now what we want to do 
is set the left constraint to be the left edge of new number instead. So let's go ahead and do that. Like so. And the other thing we want to do is make sure that uh, we change the margin, the left margin now, for button 7 to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit off. You can see now that it's uh, fitting in quite nicely. Now for this particular layout, that's all we need to do. We haven't really centered the button array, but as it's constrained to something that is centered, and it is the same width, it all works fine. Now if I switch the uh, layout to landscape, it will still look fine. Well, fine horizontally, it's not as good vertically, but we'll come back to that later. And again, just to having, a, having a look to see what this looks like, I can come up here and switch to landscape. So you can see that uh, it does still look okay. Well, I guess it, I guess to be fair, fine horizontally, as I mentioned, it's not so good vertically, but we'll actually come back to that. Right, so I'm going to go back to, to uh, portrait again. We haven't centered the array of buttons, as I've said. Now, because we've only got four buttons across, it works fine, but if we added more columns of buttons, then it wouldn't be centered any longer. I'm going to come back to that at the end of this section and look at how to center groups of widgets. Now though, there's just one more thing I want to discuss before we move on to writing the code for the calculator. Now in the previous videos, we removed the text from the text view in code. It's easy to do as you saw and uh, it's often a good idea to leave text in the layout. But in this one, I'm going to clear the text in operation, and then try to change its vertical constraint so it's aligned on its baseline. It does look a little bit high when aligned to the top there. So I'm going to come over here to our text view. This is for our operation our widget. We're going to delete the text as I mentioned. And you can see that uh, once I pressed enter there, and the same thing would happen if I click back in the design, in the uh, design or blueprint, the widget shrinks, and that's because it's set to wrap underscore content. In fact, there isn't any content. So I'm going to start by deleting the vertical, con vertical constraint. And you can see that it's disappeared from the inspector at the right, and I could have deleted it from there as well. In fact, now the widget's so small, it's probably easier to use the inspector to delete the constraints. But uh, creating the baseline constraint that we want now is just about impossible. And uh, it is possible, but it's pretty hard to try and get over to there and get to touch the, uh, the baseline button now, which of course makes the handle appear. Now I could resize the widget or put some text in temporarily to make it wide enough or I could even edit the XML. There is another way though. It's not necessarily easier than putting some text in temporarily, but it's useful to know about it. Now the constraints appear in the attributes. So I can expand the attributes using the double arrow as I've been using, uh, been doing in the course. And then I can expand, we'll go back up to the top of the list. I can expand constraints as you can see here. Now remember that the list is alphabetical, but properties that have been used are shuffled to the top of the list. So it may help if I make this still a little bit wider so that we can see the names of all of these, basically the full names of each constraint. The one we want is the baseline underscore to baseline off. This one here, baseline underscore to baseline to baseline off. Now the names are very descriptive, so we can see the constraints that we've already set. So the left one, start, is set to the left of the layout. This one here, start, set to parent. Now the right one, end, well that's constrained to the left of the new number, as you can see up here. Now we want the line, we want to line the baseline of the text view to the baseline of new number. So we could just put its ID, you know, ampersand plus ID slash new number as the widget to constrain the baseline to. And even easier, we could just select new number from the list. So I can come over here, select new number. And you can see immediately the uh, alignment actually kicked in straight away and we saw that uh, being drawn up on the screen. So the two new widgets have been added to the bottom of the component tree, by the way. So I'm going to come back over here and make a bit more space. So I'm going to drag them up to, so, so they uh, appear in the list in the order matching the placement in the layout. So it should really be result, operation, and then new number. Like so. So we go back into landscape now and just have a bit of a look. You can see that the buttons are far too close to the bottom of the screen. 
There's a fair bit of space between the widgets vertically, so we could start shuffling them up by reducing their top margins. Now sometimes you may have to do that, but Android's got another solution. And it's possible to create separate layouts for different screen sizes, and landscape counts as a different screen size to portrait. Alright, so let's finish the video here. Now that uh, we've identified that uh, these buttons are too close, in the next video we'll spend a bit of time fixing that problem so that things look right for this interface, both in portrait and landscape mode. So I'll see you in the next video.